नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग नमस्ते गणेश जी नमस्ते शिमला दीदी नमस्ते ऑल वेलकम टू द मॉर्निंग नमस्ते 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 सभी को नमस्ते गणेश जी नमस्ते को नमस्ते so ganesh today also we go with the questions uh, in the beginning or shall we go with the recap yeah i think we will go with questions namaste ganesh ji namaste sabhi ko namaste ji namaste ji this is a question about my human contact so how to shed my ego related to this ji i have another question how can i be responsible for the sanskar which god strengthened for example the sanskar of ego which god strengthened because of ignorance because only during this lifetime i came to know i had the opportunity to know about self is there self is continuous its development is linear realization etc so how can i be responsible for the sanskar which got strengthened because of my ignorance yeah <laughs> this is interesting you know uh, uh, the traditional answer to this is that this ignorance mm. is something which is there from the beginning right so when the self is there it begins with the ignorance and if there is ignorance there is ego so this is true that i am not responsible for this ignorance or for this you know uh, ego that yeah. i have so this is true to begin with mm. but given that i am there okay and i am there with the ignorance and therefore with the ego is this the only possibility given this is there only this this the only possibility or there are other possibilities in me that is the question mm -hmm. so if there are other possibilities and i am not exercising those possibilities or working on this pos those possibilities then i am responsible so it is true that it is you know this ignorance is there as an integral part of my being right from the beginning but it is also true that i have the possibility to know possibility to see right possibility to understand mm. so that possibility is always there with me by the very design of this self by the very existence of the self so if you look at the existential reality and if you look at the self in this existential reality you can see that while you are starting with the ignorance but you have the possibility of knowledge possibility of knowing things understanding things right so the eyes are closed to begin with but they can be opened you can open your eyes and you can see the reality at the level of self and that is what essentially we are trying to do we are saying that the self has this pure observer as an integral part of its being and if we activate this pure observer or if we move to that level of observer and start becoming aware 
of the things inside and of the things outside then it is there is a possibility for me to know to see to understand right so before starting with exercise 1 and 2 Mm. and particularly in you know, starting with exercise 1 mm. we made certain observation and one observation was that when we feel that something is important then we have the capacity to pay attention to it mm. and when we pay attention to it we have the capacity to see it and when we see it we have the capacity to understand it Mm. all this is an integral part of myself mm. so now there are two possibility one is that i have ignorance to begin with right and mm. second is that i have the possibility to know to understand by way of paying attention to something seeing that thing and understanding that thing at the level of pure observer so if you investigate into the self you have the two extreme possibilities one is that you are operating at the lowest activity of the self and that is selecting and testing that we have been talking about mm-hmm. and there prominently your attention is in selecting and testing in the world outside so all that you know your concern seems to be is to see what is there outside okay and how to get whatever you have considered you know to be useful for you from outside mm this is the state of ignorance mm-hmm. so ignorance means i am operating at the lowest activity of the self and engaging myself with the world outside only mm-hmm. that is the ignorance and when i am engaging with the world outside only without trying to understand myself then there is this ego Mm. now what do we do or what we need to do is to start paying attention to the higher activities of the self mm-hmm. so and ultimately we start paying to attention to this highest activity of the self which is the activity of the pure observer so i have two extreme possibility to be in utter ignorance and to be with you know knowledge of the existential reality okay and particularly the self in its completeness so i have to make the choice now in this in the light of this i can say that if i have not done this you know or work for this highest possibility then i am responsible mm. right mm. and therefore we are saying let us work for it mm. let us be responsible and work for it so you have the low you are there in the lowest level of consciousness mm. and you are not looking into the possibility of the highest level of your consciousness then you are responsible for it mm-hmm. if you are working through it then whatever is your state of being at this point of time right you are being responsible isn't it ji 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 yes the for the proposal for sanskar we say environment also plays a role yes i am born in a place which is in not in my control yes yeah we said that there are three 
important things which are playing role in my sanskar at the next moment mm -hmm. and those three things are number one my sanskar at this moment of time my environment at this moment of time and my self exploration at this moment of time mm. three things right ji mm ji -hmm. so in regard of what has been my process till now mm. and therefore my sanskar at this point of time i have two options one is to be guided by the environment and second is to work for the self exploration so the two choices are there mm -hmm. if i am only guided by this environment and not working for the self exploration then i am in trouble mm -hmm. if there are effects of the environment on me okay but despite that i am working on my self exploration then i can keep you know purifying my sanskar mm -hmm. so that choice is always there with me and that choice is important that we are trying to work with mm -hmm. so if you look at this exercise 1 and 2 we are not trying to change the environment immediately mm -hmm. we are saying given all that environment okay i mm -hmm. still have the possibility to work with myself and work with my you know my body work with my environment that possibility is there and experience of most of you who have been going through this process is that given the environment given our past sanskar we can start working on ourselves right yes. and it makes all the difference right in me then it makes lot of difference in my working with my body and it starts making difference even in my working with my relationship my family my workplace right mm -hmm. that has been your experience we have been listening to your sharing ji mm ji -hmm. for last ha huh? last two years almost mm -hmm. yeah so that choice is always there with us Mm -hmm. and we are saying let us exercise that choice mm -hmm. let us work on this self exploration which is always there as a possibility in me and if we do that it starts changing my own sanskar and it also starts changing my interaction with the environment isn't it mm -hmm. that same you know environment starts getting changed modified and it starts becoming cooperative for me is that true very very true ji in my yes. life <laughs> i was having so many opposition towards me so and i could see him very supporting very cooperative all these things Yes, I am enjoying the feeling of relationship. Very true. Yes. Thing. And I and I had previously shared also that we used to quarrel. We used to use abusive language against each other. Always, yes. I blame my husband that he is the one who initiated. All these have dropped. G. Very true. Very true. G. Yes, you are a very good example yes, of G. this possibility. You have worked sincerely on yourself, and I mean, it's logic. <laughs> yes. Even yeah. for this sanskar of ego, also, G, I was having the excuse: How can I be responsible for the strong sanskar can sanskar of my ego? It is not yes. my responsibility like that. I am giving that. I was giving that excuses, G. yeah true that is one of the sanskar 
participants for last two years it's all because of the uh team ji yes true you know this is all collectivity that we are working in and we are helping each other that is setting a good environment isn't it yes 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 ji yeah an environment which is favorable for the self exploration mm. an environment which is favorable for updation of our sanskars you know purification of our sanskar yes thank you thank you so much yeah namaste ganesh sir namaste namaste my co explorers namaste uh, Uh, i know sir uh, you are a veteran in this uhb experiences i will ask you a small a life slightly different type question uh, if i request you to tell the gist of uhb in relation to continuous happiness uh, within four five sentences or like that uh, what you will say <laughs> yes so you are yes. taking my exam yes sir <laughs> okay <laughs> so what we are trying to understand through usb is to understand our basic need as a human being and how we can fulfill that need yes yes so the essence of what we kind of see as a, an outcome of the ex- exploration is that we can see that our need is for continuous happiness exactly yes. and this continuous happiness can be en- ensured through right understanding the right feeling and right thought and which is expressed in the form of right behavior right work and right participation in the higher orders which starts from family to world family so this is the way i can ensure my continuity of happiness and pave way for continuity of happiness for every individual and if you look at this right understanding this right understanding it has to do with understanding my harmony in the self as a human and then understanding my harmony in family society nature and the whole existence so right understanding would include understanding of harmony at all four levels of my being which can be termed as harmony in human being in family in society in nature and in existence and if i have this right understanding then it will naturally reflect in me in terms of right feeling and right thought and which will further reflect in terms of my behavior with other human being which is mutually fulfilling my work with rest of nature which is mutually leading to prosperity and my participation in the human order which leads to fulfillment of human goal from family to world family so this is the essence yes sir thank you thank you very much yes thank you so how much marks will you give <laughs> <laughs> now i am not 
<laughs> qualified to evaluate. <laughs> Namaste, Ganesh ji. Good morning. Namaste. Namaste to all. Namaste. Uh, Ganesh ji, uh, actually, it's usually said uh, in many uh, Advaitic uh, traditions that uh, the feeling of the separate self, the I, uh, is an illusion. So, uh, and when we have the realization, uh, it is said that uh, the feeling we realize the come out of the ignorance that the separate self of I is doesn't exist, and that is only one. So, can you please comment uh, on this? It will. Thank you. Yeah, this uh, notion of I in Advait uh, Vedant is not what we are talking about the self. Okay. Uh, there, the notion of I is defined in a very specific manner and it is very near to ego. And the meaning of ego is that I am not able to see that I am in relationship, right? I am in harmony, I am in coexistence. So when I am not able to see this, then I think that I am in isolation from others or I am in opposition to others. And that is what is called as Dvet. Dvet means the one which is, which is seeing the others not in relationship, not in harmony, not in coexistence, but seeing himself in opposition to other Dvandu. Right? And which is not right. Then what is right? So, to see oneself in relationship, in harmony, in coexistence, and not in opposition, is what is right. And that is the meaning of Advaita. So, Advaita so Advait essentially means that I am able to see that I am not in isolation, and I am not in opposition. I am in relationship, right? I am in harmony, I am in coexistence with this whole existence, right? So I am an integral part of this existence, which is in the form of coexistence. And it goes little further and says that if you look at this existence, this existence itself is in coexistence or is in the form of coexistence. And if I investigate myself, right, then I can understand this whole existence, right? And I can see that I am the seed, right, of this coexistence. So what is there in this existence as coexistence is there also in me. So I'm not different from the existence. I'm not in isolation in this existence. I'm not in opposition with other units in existence, but I'm related to one and to all because that is the way the whole existence is and I'm an integral part of it. If I can see this, understand this, then I'm free from that ego, right? which considers itself to be in isolation or in opposition with others. Is that clear? Yes. 
uh, sometimes uh, uh, people say that uh, when they uh, have this realization uh, they say that uh, uh, the feeling of i is not there now and everything is happening on its own uh, not uh, yeah true they say realization But what is the meaning of feeling of i the meaning of it is that i am not having the feeling of is that isolation is or it? feeling of opposition so now i am a self which has the realization of coexistence understanding of harmony and contemplation of relationship and therefore i have no feeling of isolation no feeling of you know opposition i have the feeling of relationship harmony and coexistence that is the meaning of not having feeling of i that is what i explained isn't it so it is not that you are not there you are there as a self now you are a realized self you are a self with the realization of coexistence you are a self with the feeling of relationship and not opposition you are a self with the understanding and acceptance of harmony and not this harmony and contradiction and that is what is expected you know that state of bliss the continuous fulfillment is what is the state you know that is what is the meaning of satchidanand that you know the basic the fundamental reality the sat the unchanging reality right you are the, the consciousness the pure consciousness or evolved consciousness chit and you are in a state of ananda bliss <coughs> and you are not in a state of ego now right which was the cause of unhappiness you see what is happening is that there are different ways of expressing the same thing you know and this different expressions we get so stuck to those expressions that we think that they are not being able to address the fundamental existential reality if you understand them properly you would see that they are saying the same thing basic in basics expressions are different the details are different the languages are different the conditions were different because therefore they were taking different kind of examples right the conditions may be demanding for certain particular aspects of reality to be paid attention so they are paying attention to those things but the basic reality is same therefore their understanding about those realities are also same <clears throat> that we have to slowly start understanding so if you look at this vedant look at gita you know the sankhya the yog they are basically addressing the same basic fundamental reality which they have understood once we understand it we can see that they are talking about the same thing in a different way Thank you Ganesh ji thank you so much for that
ക്ലാരിറ്റി ജസ്റ്റ് ക്യാൻ ബി ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ദാറ്റ് വെൻ ദ റിയലൈസേഷൻ അറ്റ് പോയിന്റ് ഓഫ് റിയലൈസേഷൻ ജസ്റ്റ് ബിക്കോസ് ഓഫ് ദിസ് തിങ് ദ ഫീലിംഗ് ഓഫ് ഐ ഡ്രോപ്സ് നോ ദാറ്റ് ദ ഡൂവർഷിപ്പ് വിച്ച് വി ഫീൽ ദാറ്റ് ഓൾസോ സീസസ് ഇൻ ദ സെൻസ് ലൈക്ക് വി don't feel that i'm not i'm the doer feeling i'm just <laughs> curious about asking that the doer shipper yeah this is you know this is what i was saying just now <laughs> there are different ways of expression now let me put it you know what we are trying to say you know <laughs> and how it you know can be said the same thing in a different way as vedanta is saying advait is saying uh, what we are saying is that when you have the right understanding you are able to see that this whole existence is in the form of coexistence you are able to see that this nature and every unit in nature is in harmony you are also able to see that every unit is in relationship with other unit and this is the very design of the existence right now when you are able to see this and then you see that you as a human being or you as a cell is an integral part of this existence then you realize that your very possibility of being is to be in coexistence harmony and relationship so you accept this coexistence at the level of realization this harmony at the level of understanding and this relationship at the level of contemplation right so in a sense you have become coexistence harmony and relationship you have become a representative of this coexistence and its way of being right and now when with that understanding of coexistence harmony and relationship now when you think in terms of your relationship with other units and how you are going to fulfill it so all your feeling and desire and thought i mean your thought and express ex- expectation are in line with this coexistence harmony and relationship that is what is called as resolution right? and with this right understanding and resolution in yourself you are in a state of continuous happiness that is what we have been saying you know, all through this yes which we now let me put the same way same thing in a very different way so we are saying that when we understood this existence as coexistence harmony and relationship we have become coexistence harmony and relationship right and also my thought of my relationship with others is going on in line with coexistence harmony and relationship now this is something which is taking place in a very natural manner so i am not doing something extra this is the way of being in this existence and that is what is being done here so i am not a doer in a sense of doing something different from what is some natural to be in this existence so i would say that not that i am doing it something extra it is something which is happening in this existence and it has to happen in this existence because that is the way of this existence so if i ask if you ask me am i responsible yes i am responsible am i doing something 
different from what has to happen in this existence. No, I am not doing anything different. This is something which is natural to happen. That is the design of this existence. And therefore, it is being done in me. It is being done through me. So, as I said, I am not a self now in isolation. I am not a self in opposition. I am a self in line with coexistence, harmony, and relationship. And with this, I am in a state of harmony and happiness within. I am in a state of continuous happiness. I am in a state of bliss. And I am not doing something extra, not doing something different. So that is the meaning of you know saying that I have no notion of ego, I have no notion of isolation, I have no notion of opposition, I have no notion of doing something different from what nature and existence has to be, or what is the way of this nature and existence. I you know say this many times that one of the Chinese philosopher, Lao Tzu. He says in another way, he says, those who flow as life flows know that they need no other force. They feel no wear, they feel no tear. They need no mending, they need no repair. So I'm flowing with this river of coexistence, river of coexistence, harmony and relationship. So I'm not doing anything, you know, extra or special. But when I'm flowing with this life, with this nature, with this existence, right, I don't need any other force. I don't feel any wear, any tears, and therefore I don't need any mending, any repair. So you are in a state of bliss, state of continuous happiness. So in that sense, you are not the doer. But if you ask them, are you responsible? They will say, yes, we are responsible. In fact, if you look at this Advaita Vedanta people, and if you look at their you know, uh, process, uh, it is a very rigorous process, very tough process. So whatever they have to do as a process, they are very rigorous about it. So they are the doer in that sense because they are working on that process in a very rigorous manner, very responsible manner, right? While they are working on it and while they have achieved it. If you look at Sankaracharya, for example, right? At a very, very early age, he worked on it, he had the realization. And after realization, he moved through this whole country from Himalaya to Kanyakumari and went twice also, I think three times, just walking. He did so many things, it's very difficult to even conceive. Isn't it? Four mud on four corners of the country. Right. And so many akhalas and so many things he did. You will feel it difficult even now with your all aeroplanes and all that. So he is being responsible and he does not feel that he is in isolation and he is in opposition. 
So he is in relationship with everyone, and therefore he is responsible to everyone. And in order to fulfill his responsibility, he is going all the way from one end to the of the country to the other end. Thank you, Nasi. And uh, can we say that uh, Shankaracharya took birth, took a body uh, to help the humanity out of his love, not by cross of uh, uh, the compulsions of the Sarabdas or anything like that? We can guess, you know, that we cannot say conclusively, but we can guess that, you know, he does not seem to have those you know, need for getting happiness from, you know, the sensation through the body. That need does not seem to be there you know, right from the beginning. But I would say it, it is a guess. If you want to make that guess, make a guess like that. Because that is not the basic concern for him, right from the childhood. This man at the age of three, right, when his uncle asked about him, if you look at his response, you can see, you know, so much of different difference. But I would say it is a guess, you know, it is a possibility that I'm saying, you know, can see. But we don't know, he might have had some sanskar which has to be handled you know, and uh, you know worked on. The tradition is very open to this. Thank you, thank you, Ganeshji. Thank you so much. <laughs> it has been nice talking to you after the, the Pune meeting. Yes, Namaste. It's almost a year now. Thank you. Uh, so, Namaste, Bhaiya. Uh, Namaste to all my heart. Namaste. Namaste. Uh, my question is, uh, the, due to external outward disturbances, people uh, are able to uh, uh, cope up with uh, uh, understand the self and they would like to change the environment they are in general shift to one uh, uh, environment to other environment uh, is it uh, naturally acceptable and how far it is uh, possible to uh, uh, possible themselves to transform or uh, realize the reality is it correct i mean i i am not clear about your question can you just Reformulate the question. And then most of the cases, this yeah. uh, outward disturbances are much more uh, due to that uh, people uh, thinking that uh, shifting from one environment to other environment is uh, better to make themselves uh, to introvertness and uh, to do all these practices, uh, realizing the self and all those. So this uh, shifting environment, one environment to disturbing environment to other calm and peaceful environment, how far it is uh, correct and uh, is it uh, really naturally acceptable? Yeah, yeah. I have already responded to this um, uh, question in a different form. Uh, what Gita Ji was asking, you know, yes. that how responsible I am for my state of being if the environment, the given conditions are not favorable. Yeah. I said that three things are important. My past sanskar or sanskar at this moment, my environment, which is favorable or unfavorable for my further exploration. 
and third is my self exploration which is my decision so all three of them are important but if you ask me which is the most important i would say that this decision to work on self exploration this is the most important and i'll explain the reason why i am saying this my sanskar at this moment is something which is given right whatever be the past reason but i have this sanskar at this moment and i cannot do anything to change it i have to start with this so that is one factor which i cannot do anything for second is the environment okay. environment i can change partly or i can move to a new environment as you were saying so this is another possibility but there is no guarantee that if i change the environment first there is no guarantee that i can change the environment but if i am able to change the environment then this new environment will be good enough for me to progress so that is second thing third thing my self exploration my decision to work for self exploration and you start and starting to work on self exploration this is the thing which i have all my freedom okay all my freedom to work on so what conclusion we can draw from this is that given any environment and given any sanskar let us decide to work on our self exploration because that is something i can start working on with full freedom okay in regard of what is my back, you know past sanskar and what is my environment if the first two are favorable i can make a faster progress if first two are not favorable then probably my progress will be slow in the beginning which is fine but not, nobody stops or nothing stops me from working on my self exploration so if you look at what we are, what we have been trying to do in exercise 1 and 2 we are not saying that you know you can start working on it only when you have particular kind of sanskar or only when you have a particular kind of environment we are saying that irregardless of what is your past sanskar irregardless of what is your environment immediate environment you can start working on it and we have seen most of us are able to see that if we start working on self exploration it makes so much of difference and this change in my own sanskar on the basis of this self exploration may be slow or fast but it is making a difference for example geeta ji you know who have been actively participating in this process of self exploration over last two years in the morning session and she has been very expressive right when it start, she started the environment was certainly not very favorable and her own sanskar was also not very strong right so there was an environment of opposition in the family right and she herself is to get irritated and would react right so she had this feeling of opposition 
So that was the state of the past sanskar and the environment. But with that, she started working on her self-exploration. And it started making a difference. And now it has made so much of difference over the last two years. So what we would suggest, or you know, what seems to be you know, uh, uh, workable, is that whatever is the environment given at this point of time, and whatever is my past sanskar, let me start working on this self-exploration. And it will start making a difference. And if at any point of time you feel that this environment is very negative and not at all conducive for the self-exploration and the self-development, and you can have a better environment, then you might even plan to shift. Right? But that is meaningful only when I have started working on myself and I am finding that this environment is not at all conducive. Otherwise, what is happening is that when I'm not working on myself and I keep changing the environment, then I don't make any progress. I don't reach anywhere. I keep complaining for one set of environment, then move on to the other environment. There are another set of complaints and I keep on moving, isn't it? Yes. yes. And there is no significant progress. So let us start with the self-exploration with whatever environment I have. Let's start working on it. And if I find that, okay, at some point of time that this environment is not at all conducive and there is some other environment which is more conducive and I can make a shift, then I do it. But main thing is the self-exploration. That I have to start working with right now at this moment of time, with whatever sanskar I have. And that is what we have been doing. And it has made the difference when more than 1000 people have gone through this process. And it has made a difference in uh, their state of being for each one of them. What do you feel? Did it yeah, make any yes. difference for you? Yes, yes. Uh, irrespective of environment, uh, it uh, depends on our samskars and uh, uh, other uh, self-exploration is uh, most uh, important uh, than other uh, aspects. What do you No, just repeat it again. Self-exploration uh, initiation, self-exploration, once you, we start self-exploration, then yes. other uh, effects uh, may not be uh, play a greater role. Yes. I mean. yes, true, true, true. Where are you from? I, I, I am from uh, Hyderabad, uh, working in the Inner Institute of Indian Technology as professor in mechanical okay. department. Okay, okay. This is in Hyderabad? Yes, yes. Okay. Right. Nice. Yes. Nice, nice. Very much. Yes. Judgment, hurt, uh, depression, and uh, there are the, so many pseudo feelings. Uh, uh, so I could uh, how to see it from the uh, B1 block. I am able to analyze uh, the negative feelings, some part of the negative feelings uh, in the B2 block with clarity but uh, i want to understand uh, and observe it from the uh, b1 block so how to do that sir kindly guide sir let me uh, formulate your question and if i uh, understand it properly i will respond uh, you are saying that there are certain negative feelings in me yes sir in block b2 and I'm able to see them from block B2. Now the question is, how do I see them from block B1? And what do we do? Is it is that the question? 
Yes, sir. That is the question, sir. So, <laughs> see, if we are operating only at the level of B2, then it is very difficult really to see that these feelings are, you know, uh, not the right feelings. Because we have seen in exercise one, step four, that these feelings that we have, this thought we have, is decided by me only. So we have decided in favor of it. So somewhere or the other, we think that they are essential. And that is why we have these feelings. So it is difficult to decide that they are not desirable feelings from B2 only. Somewhere we are operating from B1, from this, you know, pure observer. And we are able to see that even though we have decided to have these feelings and we are having those feelings, they are not natural. And they are not leading to a state of harmony and happiness. So the fact that you are able to see that you have feelings which are not the right feelings is possible because somewhere you are operating from this block B1. This pure observer is at the level of block B1. So you are operating. What we are saying is that it is good that you know you have the possibility to operate from B1 anyway. You know, make that as a basic asset for you and start making that as the base of your process of self-exploration. And that is what we are saying when we are saying in step one, exercise one, be aware. Be aware. Observe your imagination, desire, thought, and expectation. That is block B2. Evaluate it and don't react to it. This being aware, being observer without reaction is essentially possible only when we are operating at the level of pure observer. If we come down, we will become reactive. If you come down to the level of sanskar or the level of imagination, there is a likelihood of you know, reacting to whatever is happening. You cannot observe it, your imagination, without reaction. So you are already operating from this level of pure observer, which is part of B1. And what we are saying is that let us make that as an asset for us. If you are only operating at the level of B2, you will not even be able to realize that the feeling that you have, the undesirable feeling, is a you know, negative feeling. You think that given all the circumstance and given my sanskar, this is what I have to do. And that is why you are taking decision in favor of that feeling. So you are anyway operating from B1. Make it, you know, stronger. Make it the base for your observation. So you start with that step one of being aware being observant, you know, looking at your imagination, your desire, thought and expectation without any reaction and then go on to uh, higher steps of observing whether they are, these feelings you have are natural, unnatural, leading to happiness, unhappiness. All that you can start working.
isn't it and ji bhaiya uh, thank you very much bhaiya for uh, uh, rightly guiding and motivating me uh, for uh, correcting me uh, and empowering me uh, uh, that i am operating uh, uh, making me aware that i am operating from b1 block so that's a motivation and that's a right understanding thank you very much bhaiya thank you very much uh, team you actually yes thank you thank you thank you where are you from so i am working uh, with the national institute uh, under the department of disabilities ministry of social justice government of india and based at delhi okay okay uh, nice. yeah yeah yes very nice so i am working on disability sector since last 35 years sir okay okay yeah i happen to meet uh, rakesh agrawal rakesh agrawal right your secretary uh, mr rajesh agrawal yes sir i rajesh know you met him at his residence uh, yes. and in fact there is uh, one council called the habitation council of india wherein uh, there was a national meet and uh, in the open forum i placed this issue i gave your reference and uh, he uh, he uh, remembered that that uh, he, he know you uh, and uh, you and you are from kanpur so and you met him so and i uh, i tried my level best to uh, uh, to introduce uhv in our national institutes we are having nine national institutes across india yeah. and i wanted to take it forward to other uh, so but i'm not getting it through uh, because of uh, Uh, something which uh, means at bureaucratic level uh, these uh, means that the, that part has to be uh, rightly uh, communicated means there is some communication which needs to be done so no if you have any concrete proposal uh, you can either meet rajesh ji directly or you can send it to me and i will send it to him yes sir i, uh, uh, I sent it long back uh, when he joined initially and you met him and as and when i came to know on nearly uh, within 3 uh, days of that uh, uh, long back i sent him the proposal but uh, uh, he he's primarily working towards more empowering aspects means this uhv content has to be uh, means uh, the right i think the right message uh, the, the message has not been to him to that's my understanding or he may not that may not be uh, he wanted to do something else so that's not clicking the way uh, which in fact uh, you want or uhv team want or in uh, what i want basically so that's not happening that yeah. means you, it if happens you, you yeah. send you send that proposal to me okay. yes sir i will look into I'll it look. and then i i will talk to him right sir right yeah. sir yeah okay thank you thank very you much sir so that it was a lovely morning thank you very much thank you yes thank you